The verdict is in in the trial of Chad Daybell, and he's been found guilty on every single count, down to insurance fraud to every murder charge that there was to charge him with. No big surprise there. It's to see what the uh, the sentencing phase is uh, is like, but uh, uh, we're not going to be there today. Uh, let's take a look back at uh, some of the closing arguments that were made because I, I found them kind of interesting and fascinating to uh, to listen to. Uh, they talked about uh, the the messages between uh, Daybell and Lori Vallow, talking about the zombies, the death percentages, concepts that they allegedly used to to justify the killings. Let's listen to some of the magic that was the trial of Chad Daybell in closing arguments. Then on July 1st of 2019, Charles tells Lori, I'm going to go meet with Tammy in person. I'm going to tell her what's going on. Lori tells him, she won't talk to you. She's my friend. Lori and Chad are in constant communication. You heard that throughout the trial. They're having an affair. They're talking. They're getting burner phones. And you heard testimony about the burner phones. They all had multiple different phones that they would use. And when I say they all, Chad and Lori and Alex. Only 10 days later, 10 days after Charles threatens to go and tell Chad's wife about the affair, Charles is shot and killed. He's shot and killed by Alex Cox in Arizona. We heard from the Arizona detectives that on that fateful day, Charles had shown up to take his seven-year-old son, little JJ, to school. Instead of getting to take his son to school, he wound up dead. Why? Charles was dark. Charles was a zombie. And if someone's a zombie, if someone's dark, the body has to die. You know what was shocking about that one was the fact that there really wasn't much of an investigation into that murder. It was just like, oh, you said it was self-defense? Okay. Go home. No arrest. No charges. It was just, it was really bought at face value. And with all of the murders that we cover on the show, it's so rare that I think we ever see anything where it's, or maybe it's because we don't hear about it, where it's just that cut and dry, where people don't get charged. They just, people buy their bullshit. I just find it so odd that, you know, we know the job that John Pryor tried to do for this case, the defense, and <laughs> it was not a, not a great defense, but there wasn't much of a defense there anyway. Yeah. But what just astounds me is how can you even defend this guy with so many dead bodies around him? I mean, I understand he had a, a right to a, a fair trial and, and representation, but my God, how do you defend a guy like this? I wonder if um, if he can now say fuck off to Chad Daybell or if he I don't th- I don't think he has to represent him in the sentencing phase. I could be wrong, but I think uh, Chad Daybell could end up getting a public defender at this point because he did his job. Oh, likely. And, and if I were fuck because he's not even getting paid anymore. Uh, Because he's now the landlord of Chad Daybell or owns all of his property and everything he had. Um, I I would think at this point you might just be like, fuck off. (laughs) And I'm done, kids. Uh, You go get that public defender to try and save your pathetic life, you fool. Um, he did his, he did his job. He was in over his head without a doubt, even said it before the trial started. Uh, but he should have said it earlier. He said he was stupid for not raising his hand sooner saying, uh, I'm not qualified for this. You can't do that. Like a couple weeks before the fucking trial, dumbass. Mm -hmm. So I I mean, that's yeah. I, 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 you know, and I, his, he was a horrible fucking attorney. I thought his demeanor was just so shitty and unappealing. And my God, I was, I was not impressed with him whatsoever. Not that he had a very good, anything to work with, but if he had something to work with, I don't think he would have come across as a really likable human being uh, either. Uh, Let's uh, take a listen to this clip. It's uh, from uh, the prosecution, I believe also talking about 
uh, insurance money and the love of that. One thing, though, Lori was upset about. Zulema had asked Lori at one point, if Charles is a zombie, why are you back with him? Lori's response, I need to get my finances in order. After Charles' death, Lori reaches out to Chad to tell him, I'm not getting the million-dollar life insurance policy. He must have switched the beneficiary. As they proceed through this conversation, Chad's response, hmm, interesting if it was him after he had two bullets in his chest. No remorse, no grief. Lori did message Chad, though, to let him know that it was probably Ned that changed the insurance before we Ned. got rid of him. He's messaging Chad yeah, that. Ned. Ned. She also lets Chad know, don't worry, I'll still get 4000 a month in Social Security. Tylee Ryan's father had died, and Tylee Ryan had been receiving Social Security benefits. So Lori knew JJ would get Social Security benefits since Charles was dead. Lori was also going to get benefits since she was JJ's custodian. Fucking A. The way that that people can twist their minds around to believe this sort of shit uh, is 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 mind boggling. Here's another uh, piece uh, from the uh, the closing arguments of the prosecution. On June 9th and 10th of 2020, you heard multiple officers, investigators, detectives talk to you about the search of Chad Daybell's property. Agent Daniels described in detail how the search was conducted. And you heard multiple officers talk about the scene, the smell, the process, and the callousness of the way the children were discarded. You heard how the officers present at Tylee's scene were on their hands and knees, sifting through the dirt with their hands, small tools, in an attempt to locate Tylee's bones and her other remains. Tylee had been discarded in a pet cemetery with some of her remains in the fire pit as well. The investigators collected the bones, tissue, organs, and what has been described as a burnt mass. That's what was left behind. Tylee had a whole life ahead of herself. You heard how JJ was buried by the pond, and you heard how once the soil was removed, there were rocks. Once the rocks were removed, there were boards. And once those boards were removed, you heard how they found JJ. JJ was seven years old. Chad says who's dark. Chad says death percentages and three bodies are located on his property. Three obstacles that were in the way, uh, Blake said, referencing a clip of Daybell in the back seat of the police car saying, I'm not coming back to his daughter, the brainwashed one. The prosecution played several recordings, including a patriarchal blessing that Daybell gave Alex Cox and Lori was Lori's brother. Blake emphasized the message. Alex had already helped him in ways they could never repay. The prosecution also showed a text message exchange where Chad referred to relatives as obstacles. Defense attorney John Pryor then took the stand to the circus, arguing that Chad Daybell's actions and belief were taken out of context. Pryor insisted that Daybell's religious beliefs did not equate to a criminal conspiracy. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. It says, in determining the facts, you may consider only the evidence admitted in this trial. You consider the evidence that has been presented to you. There has not been any evidence saying, we're going to kill the kids. We're going to kill Tammy. There is talk about a plan. Yeah, the 144,000 building a village for the children, the infirm, the sick, the other people that Chad is able to gather. There's (laughs) the plan. And if you go through the evidence, you'll see there's reference to the plan. It wasn't a plan to kill, folks. It was a plan to gather. A plan to gather by a gentleman who's a traditional Mormon. And yes, you don't have to like his beliefs. You don't have to agree with his beliefs. (laughs) But he sure has 
the right to believe whatever he wants to believe. Second line, and again, you'll see the dot, dot, dots is because the jury instruction number eight, I want to say it again so that we're very clear. I didn't publish the entire jury uh, instruction number eight. I took these two paragraphs out. And, it, and when you read the rest of it, you'll see it, it's, uh, it, it, it basically covers the same subject. There's other topics in there that talk about it. But under the second sentence, do not attempt to guess what the my answer might have been or what the exhibit might have shown. That goes back to what I talked to in the very beginning of the trial. You can't speculate. You can't guess. You can't use common sense. You can't engage in conjecture. You can't say this is what he must have meant or this is what she must have meant or this is what they meant by this. No. You look at the evidence, and unless it tells you something, you take the evidence as you take the evidence. No, that's how it fucking works, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Pryor. That's the purpose of the jury is to uh, interpret the evidence <laughs> that's that's been given right? to them. So you're wrong. I mean, you, you can't, like, if it says, like, it's, it's something green, you can't say it's black. But that's that's what they do. This is the purpose of the trial. You can't just sit there and go, well, they said it's not true. Well, it must not be then. <laughs> Right. Jesus. I was literally works, eating kids. I was eating popcorn while I was watching that because I couldn't help myself. It uh, can't be an agreement that we have consistent religious beliefs, Pryor said, stressing that there was no direct evidence linking Daybell to the physical act of murder. Pryor also focused on the lack of DNA, but DNA evidence on the tools used to bury Tylee and JJ and questioned the credibility of key witnesses, including Melanie Gibbs, Dilemma Pestenis. Uh, he argued that the investigation was flawed and relied too heavily on speculative and circumstantial uh, evidence. Let's take a listen. And he did have an affair, folks. He had an affair. But the affair doesn't mean he killed anybody. And maybe there was a plan. You tell me that you're having an affair with someone and you don't start discussing the possibility of a future, having a future, spending time together in the future, that doesn't mean you're going to murder. Reasonable, reasonable doubt. Motive Alex Cox. Lori and Alex, that's where all the trouble. You don't go being married for 29 or 30 years with nothing as much as a speeding ticket on your record. And you then you marry someone who, what are you afraid of me? And five husbands later, no DNA. These officers failed this investigation. They absolutely failed in their investigation looking up the facts of this case. Folks, if there is reasonable doubt, and there is reasonable doubt, you must, according to the judge's instructions, return a verdict of not guilty. I am respectfully asking all of you to return a verdict of not guilty. And then right after that, I'd like you to join Chad's cult, and he'll make you one of the 144,000. Uh, I, I found this. So Go ahead. Are there technically 144,000, or is that just an estimate? Are there 145,000? I, I mean, how does this work? It's a random fuck. I, th I think it's like in some book somewhere. I don't know. I have no fucking idea, honestly. It's something okay, a bunch of it, 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 it's something a bunch do. of morons latched onto, and then they all fight to be part of it. Um, and if okay. you're you're not good enough, sense. you're not good enough. You know that's why you got to go around and convert people door to door and all sorts of stupid shit. Um, hmm. The um, uh, I want to play this other piece uh, from uh, from John Pryor because uh, I found this uh, this interesting. This is him trying to basically state, and I, he may actually have a point on this one. Take a listen. The next victim. The next victim. Husband number five. Number five. Just get insurance. Don't worry about saying there's any kids or any beneficiaries or anything like that. Honey, just say it's me and you. And while all of this is going on, all of this is happening. Chad's really good friend, Alex Cox, really close friend, 
is Googling how to put a bullet through the windshield in the side of a black Dodge Dakota that Chad Daybell primarily drives. The target was not Tammy Daybell. It was not Tammy Daybell. You heard testimony about the insurance. The target was not Tammy Daybell. And then he points at uh, at uh, Chato over there. I, that's an interesting angle I never really thought of before, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense. No, blame the dead guy, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 at some point in time, do I think Lori would have tried to kill Chad? Yeah. Um, some, it, it had Alex, do you? Had Alex, Seriously? I do. I think had Alex survived, um, had, I, I think it eventually her neurotic narcissism would have eventually led him to either kill himself or be killed because she would have willed it that way. And this is what needs to happen. And go be, go kill yourself, Chad. So, and then I'll, and like, she'll convince him to be like a murder suicide or something. And she would just not kill herself. And she'd convince him that, you know, she'll meet him on the other side and there'll be 70 lorries, you know, each with four breasts each and they'll kind of mutant like, but it's what Chad likes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think anything was truly possible with them after all, or if, if they would have kept going on. I don't think there was any logical prediction of what was going to happen next. Completely up in the air to their insanity. But uh, Chad looking very stoic as the verdict was read uh, yesterday. Just kind of standing like, well, I don't say stoic, like his dumbass self is what he looked like. Standing there next to his dumbass attorney. Yeah, he's a dumb oaf. They, they both look like two oafs that have been cooked when uh, when the verdict came in. And yep. I, it's, okay, well, you know, I'm probably going to kill me now. Not coming back. You're goddamn right, Chad. You are not coming back. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.